Yo, what's up? My name is Petrowski, otherwise known as the Pokemon MMO guy, because I've been playing Pokemon MMOs since 2011. And I've been playing Poke MMO since 2013. I also have over 8,000 hours within this game if you include alt accounts and a couple hundred other hours on other Pokemon MMOs. I've kept an eye on the scene for a very long time, and I really feel confident in my ability to judge whether a Pokemon MMO will succeed and whether it can maintain itself long term. Which is why today I'm really excited to play Pokenexus for the first time. Well, kind of for the first time. You see, Pokenexus is actually just Pokemon Planet, which if you've been playing Pokemon MMOs for a while, you probably know about. Pokemon Planet is probably one of the oldest Pokemon MMOs out there, and it's a big grandfather in the community. Now, to be totally honest, I haven't historically been a huge fan of Pokemon Planet. I've been kind of harsh on it. I always said that I thought that Pokemon Planet was outdated by the time it released and never really caught up to other Pokemon MMOs. Now, not outdated in terms of content, like for example, Pokemon only has up to generation 5, and I'm very okay with that, but updated in terms of UI, game design, and very basic MMO balancing and concepts that I feel like need to exist for a Pokemon MMO to function. But enough of thinking about what I think this game is, let's just actually go ahead and jump into it and see what it looks like. First things first, Pokenexus is a browser game that's super important to understand. And honestly, in my personal opinion, I don't really prefer that. I'd rather be able to download a client and play it on my desktop. It also just has a really strange aspect ratio, which is making it difficult to record, but hopefully we'll be able to manage. I'm going to go ahead and click a male character, do the whitest skin tone because I never go outside, and then go ahead and go over to my hair. Probably keep this messy hair, sure. Face, yup. Honestly, I'm pretty happy with this, although I do want to explore some of the options to show you guys what there is. Customization in an MMO is pretty important. Having that actual expression of character is really, really solid and actually shows your personality and the time and effort and energy energy you want to display into a game. It's probably one of the biggest critiques of Poke MMO is that the base character customization is really, really minimal, uh, but the vanities hopefully kind of end up making up for that. Like, honestly, having access to goatees, I, I kind of am a huge fan of, um, but that's the only extras. <laughs> you have two extras and it's goatee one or goatee two. I guess the devs are big goatee guys. There seems to be about 20 different hairstyles you can go through like this, but I kind of like what they did here, to be fair. Offering like Jane, like the different Pokemon characters, like this is Professor Oak's haircut, simply stock titled Oak. I feel like that's really genius, a way to reuse that asset, but also allow players to take on that look from that character that they're already familiar with. When it comes to clothes, it's pretty much the same as Poke MMO. There's shorts, long, baggy, and then for t-shirts, there's like three different. There's like t-shirts, sleeveless, long-sleeved. That's pretty much it. The customization is decently minimal, but honestly, I actually really like the sprite work. It's kind of fun, uh, and it has a cute little aesthetic to it, in my opinion. This is going to be my final character. Let's go ahead and finish our design. Yes, I am finished. Let's actually jump into the game. Honestly, FPS tracker in the top left, chat in the bottom right. But once again, we have the aspect ratio problem of since it's in browser, I have to actually go ahead and manually like resize my browser. I can't play it in full screen on my browser. I have to make sure I go ahead and like resize my browser, make it smaller, and then try to make everything fit and just kind of drag around and test, test the process until I find something that looks viewable. I went to go ahead and check the actual options and this is it. This is all of the settings in the entire game really disable money notifications disable battle music music volume players you can see brightness i can't adjust any aspect ratios i can't adjust any other sound settings there's no there's only music volume there's not actual like in-game audio noises once again I, I don't, I, I, if this is your favorite Pokemon MMO, if you enjoy this game, there's nothing wrong with that. This is just my opinion for sure. Um, there's just so many fundamental issues that I noticed with Pokemon Planet in the past and now Pokenexus that make it seem like a very archaic MMO to me. It's actually like borderline frustrating, but you know what? We haven't even left our room yet, so let's keep optimistic. There's a little chat message saying that someone encountered a high level Pokemon. I do like that. I kind of wish that Pokemon Mo actually had more shout outs in the chat. Like someone encountered a wild shiny, someone encountered like a level 100 or high level uh, Magikarp. I think having that would be pretty interesting. Um, things like this, like encountered a level 22 Snorlax. Do I really need to see that? I am blown away by like, 
I don't know if it's because the, the chat's kind of dead or the game is quiet, so they just end up having stuff like this. Like, is this a shiny? S, my cargo, S gumshoe? That'd be pretty crazy if I'm online and I already saw two people get shinies. The chat does seem to be super active though, like much more active than other Pokemon MMOs, which is really, really, really impressive. Uh, if I type slash online, let me see if I can actually see any commands like that. Also, a, there is a chat setting function. That's good at least. Uh, you can raise the font size. You can do, what is this, custom? Is this language differences? Just seeing what channels are visible. There's this text in the top right that says Hero House F2, and I was trying to press the F2 key, but now I realize it's telling me this is my house floor two, which honestly, I like that little location display. Um, that's kind of neat, but we already have that in Pokemon, but I like the idea of having the like floors. That's honestly very, very cool. That makes things a lot more clear. The side angle of my character, oh my goodness. He goes from thin to pudgy very quickly. We check our bag and they do give us a couple of starting things like Pokeballs, Escape Rooms, Repels, and Basic Potions. I'm okay with this. Like it's very, very simple items. So I'm okay with these being given to you at the very start. Um, and even an appearance reset um, being given to you from the start. I think that's honestly kind of nice and just a nice little quality thing. Um, nine, as we can see, 983 people online. Wow. Also, someone in the bottom right, we can see encountered a level 113 Dratini. So they can go over level 100. I mean, that's an interesting mechanic that I actually, that's neat. I could see myself learning about that. But this UI, I almost, I, I personally don't hate it. I'm going to be honest. I mean, no, I kind of do. What, what am I looking at here? I can't tell where to click. I can't click anything. Um... I can't tell what I'm supposed to do. Pokemon entry search because I have no Pokemon entered. Let's go ahead and go get a starter Pokemon and get one entered. I feel like that could look, this could look interesting, um, but this is, like, it's all over the place. It reminds me of 2013 Pokemon. Achievements though. Dude, they've got an achievement list. Something Pokemon is lacking and we've been asking for for a very, very, very long time. This is a fantastic feature to go ahead and see in the game. Starting your journey, you get a backpack, you get a one day uh, GM ticket for becoming the defeat the Kanto Elite Four, collect 50 different times of Pokemon. This is fantastic. This, this should be present in probably even a basic example of this or a basic thing of this probably should be in most Pokemon MMOs. That's definitely something that we could learn from, we being Pokemon and to kind of um, carry on for over from that. That'd be really nice to see Youngster Henry. I honestly, the FPS and the way the game flows does actually feel really good, I will say. Um, your sidesteps are a little delayed. It's not super, yeah, you're, that's the movement is not great feeling physically, but visually, it, I think the world actually looks quite nice. I think the uh, the look of your walk and animations are decent, uh, decently nice. I do also really like that in the trainer card, it shows all of the gym badges from all of the regions. One, two, three, four, five, six. Do they have six regions implemented into the game? That's honestly very, very cool to me to just have that all on one trainer card. This seems to be the PVP queue system. That's kind of cool. I don't know if I can queue up immediately or what, how that works. Prize shop, can you buy stuff? Battle queue prize shop. I honestly, am not against the idea. I kind of like the idea, or I was gonna say, are these battle points that you get from actually playing that? I don't hate the idea of earning legendaries through PVP and the idea of saving up PVP points to gain access to those. I think that's actually kind of interesting. Um, and I think it's a pretty cool, I think it's a pretty cool option to have in your game. Obviously there's tons of like items here. There's actually a ton of stuff to look through in this shop. I kind of like this. This is a pretty expansive uh, battle point shop. You don't get a little pop-up. Usually when you hover over icons in most modern day games, a pop-up will, will show like, oh, like this is like this thing, UI scale factor. Oh, okay, perfect. Um, oh my goodness, it's so sensitive. Okay, bring it to one. Anyways, okay, I can't even get it back to, okay, I can't even, how do I, okay, can I type one? Okay, perfect. But usually you would hover over this and it would say like, oh, like you also graphics options and this is all you have. <laughs> This is your only graphic option, guys. You can't ra you can't turn on anti-aliasing. Uh, you can't like add any sort of dynamic lighting or render it. Nope, it's just UI scale. Also, if you click on the chat or go to type and then you try to click back onto the map to actually like use WASD to move around, you can't until you actually click escape to get out of the chat or enter to send your message, which is once again, just not the biggest deal in the world, but a little clunky. 
Usually I play a Pokemon MMO for the first time up until the first badge at least. And you can you can just learn so much about a game through its UI. Uh, so for example, was this catching a Mewtwo? Mewtwo mask is the reward. There is a gift shop that I want to go over. It's the it's the bottom right one over here. So these are bought with credits. Get credits. Well, which credits are the wait? If I go back to the these are points. So there's points, credits, Poke Yen. There's a lot of different kinds of currencies, which is fine. I wish they had more specific names as opposed to vague names, like battle points would be good, or like, you know, premium credits or something. The, the terms of Poke Yen credits. Yeah. What's the other one? Points? Yeah, it just becomes a little, but that's okay. That's not a big deal. Um, IV reset. Feeding this to a Pokemon will generate new IVs. You can buy this with credits. All right. Um, not a good sign. 30-day GM ticket, 50%? Oh, that bonus is huge. Plus a 20% shiny rate. For those who don't know, in Pokemon, there, there, you can pay for a little bit of an advantage in Pokemon, so it's worth keeping that in mind. But a, a donor status in Pokemon will give you, I think, 10% increased XP. Um, it's like 10% increased XP, 10% increased shiny rates. Um... And then 5%, I think, extra Poke Yen gained from trainers. 50% bonus to XP and money is so drastic. Here, I hopped on over to Pokemon really quick to just compare them. So, Dinner Status gives you 25% extra XP in battles, 10% in chance, uh, increased chance of encountering a shiny, 10% faster egg hatching, which is probably the weakest benefit, and then 5% money gained from trainers. In comparison to the Pokenexus having access to 50% extra money, 50% extra XP. I don't even know what UCR, VR, e I don't know what that line of text means. To a new player, this just means nothing. Encounter rates? Ultra, is it something? I, I have no idea what, what, the, what that means. Uh, plus 20% shiny rates. It, this could be fine as well. Obviously different game, different market, but generally that's gonna cause inflation issues bringing 50 percent extra in but maybe i'm being over dramatic contains a random chance for a 0.1 percent chance prize mystery box okay 90 credit little loot box you know that's kind of combo with nowadays games evolution stone box contains a random evolution stone 200 credits for that or evol now are evolution stones like a tough to get thing in this game or is this just like a total scam like that's because that would be really cool i actually like the idea of evolution stones being like a difficult thing to obtain um pokemon box one percent chance for meloetta otherwise contains one of the following lickitung togepi swirlich flabibi so this is pretty drastic you pretty much meloetta or bust i would assume item bomb gives prizes to random online players i do love this i i love this is why it reminds me of like the catapult in team fortress 2 most games especially mmos dude make items like this oh my god they're just fun they make people want to spend money on your game they're just fun for the game they're fun for the free-to-play players they're fun for the for the whales yeah stuff like this item bomb this is a great item good good call pokenexus honey you can spread honey on any map which reaches the counter of all pokemon that's kind of an interesting way to use honey i actually like that buffing and counter rates i think buffing and counter rates is one of the best ways to buff things in a pokemon mmo because you're not just directly buffing the shiny rate or the xp or the whatever rate buffing the amount of encounters they get per hour you still have to work for that it kind of just encourages you to be a little more efficient and, and work a bit harder portable pc this seems decently decently pay to win but honestly in a pokemon MMO format how much time are you actually saving with a portable pc probably not a crazy amount but it could be it could be pretty insane for certain shiny hunts but how okay let's just check how much do credits actually cost yeah this is kind of what i expected so it's going to end up being one dollar per 100 credits that's usually what you would expect i think it's the same exact thing with pokey mmo so if you want to increase the encounter rate of all pokemon by 25 percent for one hour it's five dollars for a one hour buff five dollars for a one hour buff i feel like that's gotta be shiny charm or things equivalent in pokemon would be about a dollar um man that pokemon box with a one percent chance for meloetta is ten dollars a pop 
Um, I do like that you can gift things. That's very cool. So I assume you can click this button and like send it to your friend online. That's actually pretty interesting. We're browsing this for quite a while. Let's go ahead and check. Mounts, I'm mostly cool with. I think people can get a little, I think the mounts, yeah, this is my problem. Okay, but they have a shuckle mount. Can I actually be mad? I don't like when you add this many mounts into the game. I think you have to add mounts in a classy way. Um, I think having one or two legendaries be mounts or one or two. May Some people will probably think the opposite, like the more mounts, the merrier, which is totally fine. There actually is no, like, this is opinion based, right? Um, no shiny version. Can you get it? Wait, do you have a chance for a shiny mount? Okay, wait a minute. <laughs> if there's like a one out of 8,000 chance when you buy a mount that it becomes a shiny mount, I actually take back everything I said that is unbelievably based and unbelievably cool. Um, camel mount. If that's a if that's a sub game of the shiny hunting in this game, dude, sign me up. I would be shiny mount hunting so fast. Hopefully you can buy them with not, or get them in some way that isn't just credits or you can earn credits for free in some way. Because if, if you're just paid away winning for the shiny mount then screw that but man that's shiny mount hunting sounds super fun i mean they do have a pizza cape can i really complain all right let's go ahead and actually play the game let's go find where we get our starter pokemon the map does seem to be custom i don't think it like sticks to any traditional pokemon games like starting town although i could be wrong this is actually really cool i really like this little outside area that we can't access it's almost like a little garden for professor oak I think that's very, very neat. Let's go talk to him. I don't think you're old enough yet. I have a favor to ask. When I was young, pretty serious Pokemon trade. Okay, so we can get our starter Pokemon. Why does the... I don't like... Why? Why would Why would you make this decision as a... De I'm sorry, but as a developer, why would you put the text in the middle of the screen like this? It just covers your character. It covers the NPC. Why would you not put it above the NPC or up at the top of the screen? Why in the middle? Why? It's the worst... Why in the middle? Anyways, what does he have to say? Okay, we get to pick our starter Pokemon. Do you get to pick any starter in the... That's kind of cool. You get to actually choose. It's like there's seven different sets of starters. Um... I think that's actually pretty interesting. That's a pretty cool option to go ahead and represent. The question is, what should I go with? Squirtle's my boy. Squirtle's the OG. That's usually what I rock with. We'll go with Squirtle. We got Scientist Steven over here. Scientist Daniel over here. Absolutely chilling. If I talk with these server boards, I actually really like the pixel art for these server boards. Are these like, that's, that's very, very cool to me. I don't know. That's very, very neat. Scientist Steven, what you doing, dude? Okay, he's just chilling. All right, is this how I change zones? I just walk up to this giant black void and walk forward? Oh my, what year is it, dude? 2004? This was... <laughs> Man, I don't like to be a negative guy, so I apologize. I don't like to make negative content. I understand that as humans, 56 PP on tackle? Why? Is that... What? 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 Why? That... I know it may not seem like a big deal. Is it just because that's like, is that like a newer gen thing? Man, it may not come up, but like not just that just totally makes the PP in the storyline irrelevant. You never have to maybe for other moves. It's fine. Maybe you just don't maybe tackle. It's, you know, you get rid of it so early. So who cares? But like, man, you can just sit there and grind forever because you don't have to worry about the PP. I don't like that. I feel like it just takes out engagement takes out strategy out of the game for 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 the sake of quote unquote convenience but if you make everything too streamlined too convenient you, you take out the games become super boring you do have to have a decent level of like things to overcome problems and inconvenience uh really does spawn creativity and innovation okay i absolutely do love this little design of like these little bridges and then this like ravine here in the center and then walking over the map design is honestly really really pretty um you can choose to walk over either ravine. You can go up here. Uh, there's a little stump over here. I'll try to talk to it. Nope, he can't talk. To, he's not a sentient thing. Sure, we'll head over to these grass. Walk upwards. Sure, just continue our path. That's totally fine. Continue over these little bridges. The bridges over the ravines are honestly quite cute. We'll encounter a level one. Why? Why is level one? I don't understand. Um... Number one, it decreases the amount of XP I'm going to get. Unless they crank up your XP rates. Why, why would you ever be able to encounter a level one Rattata in the, in the, what's the point of that? All that does is make it easier for newer players not to die, but it also like skews XP rates. Is it to increase your, your need to grind? Is it to make it so the new players just don't die to early Pokemon so they don't quit? But like, that's okay. That should happen. 
If someone dies to a, a level two Rattata on Route One, I'm sorry, and they quit. I'm sorry. They they might need to quit the game. That's you know that might be that's okay. That might need to happen. Once again, the map design is actually really, really pretty. A lot of really beautiful, like, custom buildings seeming. Uh, drop rate blessing, 20% drop rate. So, you'll, it's it's interesting to... I, I do like the idea of these, like, world buffs, essentially, and running into these while playing. Running into them as a new player, kind of weird and overwhelming. Um, but running into them as, like, a... I, I, they're honestly very cool. I think world drops are very interesting. What is this little area up here? really unique map design i will say but then it just putters off into these black voids that you have to step into to explore anymore i'm in quote unquote viridian city oh is this supposed to be the like is this going to be the way over to the champion location like over to the elite four i'm gonna go ahead and uh, i'm gonna try to catch this ekans we'll go for a double tackle into a pokeball i crit never mind <laughs> Now, that one wasn't Pokenexus's fault. That was just uh, good old-fashioned Petrowski luck. Let's go ahead and uh, tackle this Pidgey, see if we can catch another Pokemon, get something on our team to help us out a little bit. Also, no animations. Um, no animations at all. Uh, being able to hover over the Pokemon and see the typing, very cool. Being able to see the, the battle chat log on the left, very cool. I really like that, not needing chat for that. Being able to see a turn counter, even in PVM, very cool. Um, the versus thing at the top, cool in PvP, but why do you need this in PVM versus Pidgey? Like, I feel like it just takes up screen space and it's just... This looks like a ver if you googled versus logo, this is the first thing that would pop up. Um, Oh my god, you have to cycle through your items single item by single item. There's no list. What? Um, it shakes. There's no animations. It broke free. Zero animations at all. Um, this game has existed since like 2013 and there's still no animations. There's no sound effect upon catching the Pokemon. A quick correction, according to IndieDB.com, Pokemon Planet did release around 2014, late 2014. But they were a little late to the Pokemon MMO sphere, even though it feels like they've been around forever, honestly. Um, but I don't understand it. This game's been out for 10 years, and I and I do feel like it feels like a three-month-old, like, very early stage. It wouldn't surprise me. I'm being so cruel. I apologize. If you like this game, I'm happy for you. Enjoy what you enjoy and keep playing it. I feel like Pokeforce is probably more developed than, than Pokenexus at this point. And that game's not even out yet. And it releases, they, they, they're aiming for, I think I know they're aiming for a late 2024 release, but that's kind of just rumors. Um, like Pokeforce is still in very early development and it wouldn't surprise me if they have more done and their game is more playable than this. Um, let me head down. Also, whenever I click on the screen, it constantly keeps highlighting. You guys can't see, but it's annoying to me as, as a player. Whenever I keep clicking on the screen, it just, it constantly highlights Pokenexus because it's in browser and it thinks I'm trying to like select the text in the bottom right hand corner. It's, it's an eyesore. Okay, another black void, we venture onward. I honestly, at this point, just want to do some XP training, find the first gym and get this over with. The shadowy look of Viridian Forest is honestly quite nice. I will say it's another thing that we underutilize in uh, in Pokemon Mo is underutilizing shadows. I go ahead and get caught into a battle by, by Budcatcher Sam and all of a sudden, he has level 7 Kakunas? I've killed, like, three Pokemon, and I'm still level, I still haven't gotten a level, because they're all level 1 in the wild. Why? Is it is it only to make it longer to grind? I don't... I don't understand what, what, why you'd make that decision. Thankfully, if this Kakuna just sits here and quits hard in, I can tackle him to death, but now it's just a very long, annoying battle for zero reason. There were no trainers prior to this that I could battle. There were no- the wild Pokemon were way too low level. Usually you'd have level 2 minimum, and they'd be like spawning often at level 4 to 5s on that first route, but I didn't see any. Um, I only saw level 3 and below. So now you're- as a new player, you're literally put into this weird XP gap before you even reach the first gym to where your route- your route 1 Pokemon were too low level so that now you're not even level 6 or 7 by the start of this. You didn't have your first rival battle at the start of the game as well to get that insta level 6 if you win that. There's so- there's literally a level gap missing between Palette Town and Viridian Forest. How do you- how do you mess that up balance-wise? This sounds dramatic, but like playing this game is making me angry. There are so many design decisions that make absolutely no sense. Um, there are so many things that just could be fixed so easily. It feels like there is so little effort put into it. 
As I die to Budcatcher Sam, Tech W. This feels like something you would make on like free RPG maker in middle school. I don't, I don't understand. I, I don't, I truly, as someone with, who has put over 8,000 hours into Pokemon MMOs, I, it actually feels like a crime to me that this game has almost a thousand players online when there are games like even a th like a thousand online like that means that there are more players monthly there are more players i, I just i that log in every day it's just a thousand concurrent online which is really impressive honestly when pbo has like 200 and i would already consider that game to be like a hundred times better than this i i don't know if it's just people who have never stopped playing this game if they've just been playing it for a really long time. I don't know if it's players who just Googled Pokemon MMO and this is the first thing that popped up. I haven't reached the first gym and I see absolutely no reason. Why can't I move with WASD? Am I in chat? What's happening? Oh, I was locked into chat with chat minimized. So I didn't know. So I couldn't move. What? Th this is... <laughs> I'm actually so frustrated. Like this is this has to be mark my words. It this might be the worst Pokemon MMO I've ever played. Unironically, um, and I feel like that was my sentiment before jumping into this. And I really tried to enter with an open mind. I really try to jump into things. I have been proven wrong before. If you've watched my channel long enough, you've seen me be like, "Hey, I'm skeptical of this thing. I think it might be bad," and then being like, "Oh my god, I was totally wrong. It's actually amazing. It's great." Or, "Oh, it's great, but not for me." Like. I am not a person. I will I will admit that I was wrong so fast. And I feel like you, if you've watched my content, you understand that I was right on this one. Pokemon Nexus is terrible. It feels terrible to play. There's an XP gap difference now that is causing weird issues to where now I have I have to fight Pokemon that just use Harden. I still just have Tackle. I haven't done level six. I've killed multiple Pokemon in multiple battles. Let me see how much XP I have to I gain from this fight. I'm at, at this point, I don't want to continue playing Pokenexus, but I also don't want people to think I'm just rage quitting because I can't get to or beat the first gym. So I've got to at least do that. But at this point, if I wasn't recording this for a video, I would have turned this game off. All right. I at least gained level six on my Squirtle from, from killing that Metapod by just clicking tackle 20 times in a row. Now there's a level three Weedle. That's why are you able to get level three Weedles, but also level sixes and se the first trainers level seven the xp gap feels so wonky and there was no there was the level one the level one rattatas on route one why the the viridian music exploration kind of sound i actually do like this song um this sort of whimsical exploring the forest e exploring you know adventuring that's a cool song the battle song I don't like this. Some people might. This might be personal preference. In fact, honestly, when I cranked up the volume, it actually helped it a lot. It seems to be the Pokemon battle theme, but with but on a piano, which I think could be very cool, but it's honestly not exciting enough every single battle. I think it's kind of monotonous and not interesting. Whereas um, I think having that piano for like one epic fight, that would actually be really, I think, poetic and interesting. Like having that for one, the Elite Four fight or a big final fight, um, I think that that would make a lot more sense versus every single little combat fight when that's the song for every single little wild battle it just kind of ends up droning out into the background and just becoming nothing also i just realized my pp is did my pp get healed upon level up that's weird that's strange i don't think that i don't believe that happens in traditional pokemon is it no is it every battle no sure surely they don't restore your pp after every wild battle surely they would understand how fundamentally game breaking that would be no they don't do that right okay now i got level eight let's just keep grinding um surely they wouldn't do that okay let me water gun here i'm gonna kill this thing i'm not gonna gain a level let me poke a ball and catch it sure i'm not gonna gain a level also it, it has the same there's an old pokey mode glitch that used to be the case where, um, did I heal my PP? Let me get into a battle. Um, there's an old Pokemon glitch that used to be the case that would show the little Pokeball icon to show that you have it in your Pokedex before you caught the Pokemon. So you actually know that you caught it before you even caught it, which is kind of funny. They have that same glitch in here. Um, yeah, you just restore your PP after every wild battle. Why? 
this totally defeats any sort of systematic grinding it totally defeats any sort of like thinking and strategy and and, and spot placement uh, what why you just you just made something easier for the sake of making it easier with no actual addition to the game with no reasoning for that to be the case it's just so you don't have to run back to the pc to heal your pp which i think is a damn shame now the pacing of the battles is honestly quite nice with no anime it's pretty easy with no animations for things to move super quickly um but so the pacing of the battle the the ai making their moves honestly the pacing is is quite fast which feels pretty good I'm trying to call out the positives where I see them. I don't want this video to just be me screaming. I can't believe how bad this decision is over and over and over again. But uh, that's kind of what it's becoming. Let's head. Let's start heading out of the forest. Let's go fight Bud Catcher Sam. Have our wait. What? So since I lost to him, he won't. I can't even battle him again. What? Why? Once again, this feels like oh, <laughs> we didn't know how to code it, so we just didn't. So. <laughs> what because i lost to this trainer he won't challenge me again and you can't fight him again let's let's sit down and talk about how bad that is okay i'm sure you remember growing up so much of pokemon so much of pokemon is battling a trainer losing to them and then hitting the drawing board again and figuring out how to defeat them right figuring out how to change up your team how to actually approach the battle what pokemon should you lead with should you go xp train should you maybe just gain some evs like right and then go rebattle that trainer to overcome that challenge you lost to that is so much of pokemon and you have taken that and you have deleted it from the game for absolutely no reason that i can assume other than number one you didn't want once again new baby players to say oh i lost to this trainer and i can't get past him i'm so sad let me quit the game you're either number one catering to the ultimate baby player or number two you just it just it just didn't function that way code wise and you didn't want to fix it i, I don't i actually <laughs> this game makes me mad because it's so bad I, I i genuinely believe i really wanted this to be exciting i was really really interested in, in pokemon planet's rebrand over to poke nexus and it's still the worst pokemon mmo i've ever played all right bucket your rick okay well never mind it's actually the best game ever because this is a great fucking meme if only it was up here why is text boxes in the middle of the screen i encountered a wild beedrill and it's level three number one how number one number two why right like, this is, once again, like, a, a, a glitch slash problem that Pokemon had eight years ago or so. And they've, they've hence fixed it very early on into their game career. Uh, also, look, I, I know that I caught it before I even saw it because I got the achievement in the chat. And I also got the uh, the Pokeball thing on top of it. Um, I, I can go battle Bug Catcher Jim now, I guess. Caterpie is love, Caterpie is life. Okay, the best part they have for this game is the humor. There seems to be a couple uh, later game players sitting here grinding, which is pretty interesting to me. I don't, I don't know if they're later game or not. It seems like they are. So maybe that's a decent grinding spot, which would be kind of cool. I do like games or MMOs that like make you want to go back to previous spots in the game to farm certain items or do certain things efficiently. I think making you trek back to early game spots is always pretty fun slash interesting. What was the point of that route? It just... Okay, anyways. Um, let's go head over to the PC. It's also crazy that they need to have... Um, Wait, what did it say? Oh, I'm actually healed upon entrance. That's very cool. You know what? I mean, kind of. Oh my god, what is this UI once again? How many Pokemon? How do I put them in? How do I... How do I put them in the PC? Drag? You, you have to click specifically the ball icon. Oh my god, and look at this. This, this literally feels like... <laughs> a mobile game oh man and not in the good way like that ui feels like it was built for for maybe it is on mobile maybe this game is mobile playable i guess maybe it is because it's in browser i don't know um anyways let's go over to the gym and get this over with man let's just go beat up brock with my own brock hair and just see what comes of it amper liam first taking you down the backgrounds in correlation to what type of battle you're in is is kind of cool i mean i'm happy to see that um sure that's plus one also showing the little uh, oh it's four times effective because it's geodude versus 0.5 with tackle you know i think that's cool to, cool to show in that way it kind of like very slightly shows you the super effectiveness but not it's not like lit up lit up green or something like that i think that's honestly fine 
All right, Squirtle's now level 12. Well, now it's just too easy. So you have this problem of the XP gap. Like, I've just been spamming spamming water gun you have this weird problem due to weird specific balancing that you didn't need to do um that put level one rattatas also he didn't have sturdy wow weird why so that that viridian forest was too hard and the first trainer you run into you just don't have the right level pokemon for it or any chance to gain that and then brock is piss easy it, this how do you get both there are two things you need to balance before brock right viridian forest and brock and you managed to do both of them incorrectly in the opposite ways. I'm I'm just stunned. Um this game this is a bad video game. This is one of the worst times I have had playing a video game in the past 6 to 18 months. I would not recommend any of you play play Pokenexus. I would not recommend anybody play Pokenexus. I would not play Pokenexus here or there. I would not play Pokenexus with green eggs and ham. However, if you enjoy Pokenexus, there is nothing wrong with that. Everything I've said in this video is my opinion. I think that there are some objective balancing things to be talked about, but even those, a lot of it comes down to what you're searching for in a game. It maybe doesn't affect you or matter to you. Don't go shitting on Pokenexus and don't go attacking players who enjoy it, etc., etc. I'm just sharing my opinion and hopefully in a decently constructive way. This is a lot more above and beyond than I normally go because of how frustrating this game was. And I feel like since it is since it was so bad, I think the above and beyond emotionality was warranted. But before I just judge this game unfairly and then peace out, let me actually ask some of the players in the game. Hey, like, why do you like Pokenexes? What makes you guys enjoy the game? And what would you recommend to a new player? So I've typed out, what do you guys like about Pokenexus, or rather, oh, you need to beat Erica, the fourth gym leader, to be able to send global messages. To be fair, okay, well, I would have loved to communicate with the actual community and hear their thoughts and opinions. Um, I'm not doing that. I respect that decision to, to filter out spam and stuff like that in, in MMOs, especially in free play MMOs, like that can, spam accounts and spam bots can be created to advertise things. It does happen in games. I absolutely have seen it. Um, so... I understand the decision, but what I don't understand are the other decisions, the, the XP balancing, the gift shop, the portable PC, the the UI, um, the pizza tape, I super understand. That's honestly a great call, a great decision by you guys. The, the PvP UI randomly blacking out the rest of your screen and taking over as opposed to every other UI as a little window. Why, why is that UI different? Why not make that a little window? It makes no sense. Um, I just... There are so many problems with Pokenexus. It has some of the cool aspects that I wish Pokemon had, and there are a lot. There are at least five to ten things that Pokemon could take from Pokenexus, and I would believe those to be positive changes. However, there's also ten million things I hope Pokemon never does, similar to what Pokenexus does. I am rating Pokedexus a 1 out of 10. I, I do not like this game. I don't think it's playable. I wouldn't recommend it to anybody. I think putting this in front of a toddler as their first Pokemon game would be an insult. Um, I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't play it. I'm not going to play it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be an adult and I'm going to log off and not talk about it anymore. Um, don't harp on things or focus on things if you don't enjoy them. I'm going to be locking off Pokenexus today. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Hopefully you had fun. I can't even press escape to log off. I have to just close the browser. Get me out of here. Anyways, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Like it if you did. Dislike if not. Uh, subscribe to the channel for daily Pokemon MMO content. You can follow me on Twitch for streams. Monday through Friday, Monday through Thursday. It's kind of up for debate at the moment. And then YouTube memberships, Twitch Primes, Twitch subs, and PayPal slash Venmo really do help allow me to do more content and explore other Pokemon MMOs. Hopefully, you never make me explore Pokenexus ever again. Have a great day. I'll see you guys later. Peace, Arena. Hey, thank you so very much for watching until the very end of the video. That means the world to me. And everyone on this list means even more to me for helping support the channel every single day. Thanks so much.